Hi, this is a video about how I solve leak code problems on my Mac. And here's a problem we're going to work to solve to be some on leak code. Rather than doing it within the interface, I'm going to use Xcode. I'm going to use the Mac OS command line tool. And I might call this something like three sum. Okay, and I can set up the solution here but for time, I'm just going to copy and paste my solution and explain what was going on there later in the video. So here I have a three-sum solution that should compile and it should run. And what I'm going to do is set up a series of tests that are going to work and check that we actually come up with the right answer. And so we can do that by adding a test target. It's going to be a unit testing bundle. And here we are. So we have a file that will be three sum tests. We have to switch the target to be able to run it, which is no problem. But we also have to bear in mind that we're going to have to access our solution. So I'm going to be lazy and just put it there initially it won't be able to see our main target so we have to add our relevant file into the target membership of the test target then if I run it should be able to run great and then I've got a series of tests to run and they're basically taken from the leak code problem. So there's three examples there and there's a fourth one that I'm going to run through in the explanation later. So this gets us all the tests. And they all have to be prefixed with test in order to work. Now one thing to remember here is it's tricky because we're coming out with an array of arrays. So to compare them I've converted them into tests because I don't care which order they are in. But the solution also could be in a different order within that set and my particular solution for threesome ensures that it always comes out with the same answer now not all solutions will do that but thinking of clever ideas to make all of your solutions work despite things like the order is really the right thing to do when thinking of solutions that you're going to do produce yourself and produce a test target like this we wish to find three indices where the sum of the three indices is zero, as long as each index within that triplet is unique. So for the first example, the pointers indicate indices zero, two, and three. And this sums to zero, since the elements are minus one, zero, and one, which altogether sums to zero. The second example has indices of zero, two, and four, which represent elements of minus one, zero, and two, which sum to one, which clearly isn't zero. So those candidate indices are incorrect. The third example has indices of two, two, and two. This represents the values zero, zero, and zero, which although they do equal zero, each pointer must point to a unique index. And so that particular triplet isn't valid. The problem says we must return all the unique triplets and we're going to return the elements rather than the indices in this particular challenge. You might notice that these examples have the input array sorted. This means finding all of the solutions is slightly easier because we don't have to check all of the possible solutions. And we can go through that with our example. We take an example array 2, minus 1, 0, 1, and minus 1. And before we start, we sort that input array. The method to do that doesn't really matter, and in fact, in my sample solution, I use swift sort. When we've sorted, we want the three items we're pointing at to equal 0 but we can use the sorted nature of the array to limit the number of comparisons that are made. In order to count 
each triplet only once, we can put our results into a set. So we have three pointers, I, right candidate and left candidate. I traverses the array from one to the one before last element in the array. The left candidate is one to the left of I and the right candidate is one to the right of I. We make the first check and in this case the sum is minus two. This is smaller than zero, so we increment the right candidate. And since this is a sorted array, this naturally makes our sum larger. And when we do so, our sum becomes minus one. This is also less than zero, and we can move our right candidate again, increment it, and this does yield us the expected result of zero. So minus one, minus one, and two, are added to our output set. When we decrement the left pointer, we're no longer pointing at an element in the array, and so we move to the next value of i. So i is set to 2, and the left and right pointers, as before, are set to the elements just beside 2. In this case, the first set of elements do sum to 0, giving us our second result. We then decrement the left-hand pointer. 1, 0 and 1 do sum to 0, but we already have these elements in our output set. When we decrement our left candidate, we are once again out of the bounds of the array, so we increment i. i now becomes 3, and 0, 1 and 2 sum to 3, which is larger than our target of 0, so we decrement the left candidate. Unfortunately, our sum is still larger than zero, meaning that we once again decrement the left candidate. The same is true, that the sum is larger than zero, so we decrement the left pointer and it's out of the bounds of the array. And in this case, we no longer increment i, since we've completed the range of i which we seek to trans traverse, meaning this is the end of our algorithm. This gives us our solution which is two sets of elements. Well, I hope that's helped you out. That's how I complete leak code puzzles using the Mac and using real testing to make sure I'm getting the right results rather than using the leak code interface. If you've got any questions, just get them to me, no problem.